Hi guys, again it's Michael Redden. I'm an estate telling attorney in Minnesota and today I want to talk to you about a special kind of concept that you really want to know about and that's community property. Um, you may have heard these, uh, this term put out there before. Our neighbors to the southeast, Wisconsin, they have community property and it really affects some things when you pass away. Uh, when you pass away the amount of gain that's still inside a property changes. So let's kind of give you guys an example. Suppose me and my wife bought a house and we paid $60,000 for the house. My tax basis in that house is $30,000 and hers is $30,000 because you know we can separate which half each of us own. Now um, let's fast forward and say that the house is worth $300,000 and I die. Now when you get things passed to you at death, there's not going to be any tax still inside it um, for basic income tax purposes. So my half that was that I had thirty thousand in, the rest was gain, now becomes one hundred and fifty thousand. Her basis stays at thirty. So when she sells that house for three hundred thousand dollars, one hundred eighty thousand of it is tax free. She pays capital gains on one hundred twenty thousand. If we were a community property state, then we couldn't separate the halves that we have. So when we bought that house, her basis was 60, my basis was 60. When I died, because we can't separate them, the basis goes to 300,000 and she can sell it without any kind of tax liability. So as you can see, when we're looking at community property, there's a big advantage to having community property when one of the spouses dies. And in Minnesota and many other states, there's going to be property that you own that you've owned for a long time that's appreciated in value. There's a lot of tax bent up in that property. And you're going to hold it to one of you die. So if it's not community property, that surviving spouse is going to have a tax burden. And maybe they don't sell it. Maybe it's not suitable or appropriate to them, but they can't pay the tax. If it was community property, there'd be no tax and we'd solve the problem. Well, did you know that there are three states Alaska, Tennessee, and South Dakota to let non-residents, even you in Minnesota, make a trust where everything inside it is community property. This trust is revocable. You can change it. You can undo it. You can change where things go after you die. But inside it is community property. So you could put your house in there. You could put those stocks in there. You could put those things in there that you're going to hold till after you die. And then when you die, there's no tax for the survivor. It's a very big benefit. Now, what do you need to know about these trusts? Well, for one thing, Community property is treated different in divorce, so you should really have a good marriage. In separate property, we know we're going to split these things up fairly, not necessarily equally. In community property, we're going to assume that it's split equally, so it's a different thing you need to know about. Additionally, there are some costs to the trust. It's going to be a yearly fee you have to pay because it has to be, say, a South Dakota trustee. But generally speaking, for most people, that fee that you're going to pay over the course of time is a lot less than what the tax would be on it. So you end up saving a whole lot of money. So that's something you should definitely consider if, you, if you're holding on to those kinds of assets. And if you want to talk about these trusts, I can actually draft those trusts and place them over in that state for you. Um, so if you have any other further questions, set up an appointment with me. Um, send me an email, ask me a question. Otherwise, speak to another state planning attorney. But you should definitely consider turning your property into community property if you're in a great marriage and you're going to hold things until you die.